Hi, I'm Aisha from Center for Quantum Technologies. Today, I'm going to talk about generating quantum random numbers on a cube satellite. We call our satellite Spooky One. We have built a quantum random number generator on board a nano satellite, and we have tested the functionality of our QRNG and the quality of our randomness that we generate from our QRNG. The primary goal of our work was to demonstrate quantum entanglement in space. And this demonstration of quantum entanglement in space can lay the foundation for global future QKD networks. An additional goal of this work was to build a QRNG on a nanosatellite using the quantum short noise of our optical source. We have two ground stations. One is at our university in Singapore, and one is at FHNW Institute in Switzerland. And we have been generating random numbers on our QRNG and have been receiving rudimentary beacon at both of these stations from our satellite. So we can say that our QRNG on board this satellite can form the foundation for a globally accessible randomness beacon for off-grid platforms. This is a replica of our satellite, and this is now in low Earth orbit, and it is still operational. Types of QRNG and our source of randomness. There are many approaches to build a QRNG. I have listed here some of the interesting approaches. There are quantum short noise based QRNG, entanglement based QRNG, device independent QRNG. For our work, we have used this quantum short noise based QRNG from the coincident events. This is a simple diagram of our uh, optical source. We have built this SPDC based entangled photon pair source. So, this optical source uses the uh, spontaneous parametric down conversion to generate the pair of photons. So one high energy photon is split into two low energy photons. And it follows the conservation of energy and momentum. We have two LC pairs, which are liquid crystal polarization rotators. And we use them to select the basis of these photon pairs. D1 and D2 are two detectors. And we use them to detect these photons individually. These are basically silicon-based avalanche photodiodes. We have a counting circuit that records the coincident event per second. And we use the quantum short noise of these coincident events as a source of our randomness. Now from the nature of our source and the SPDC process, we know that this coincident event per second follows a Poissonian distribution. Here is a plot of the coincident events, and we have recorded this data at our lab in our institute. This is some 3,000 seconds worth of data. And if we observe, uh, then we can see that even though the source is running in the same setup all the time, there is variation in the output. And this is due to the quantum short noise. So one question may arise that why don't we just use a detector and a laser directly to generate this Poissonian randomness? Well, the reason is this detection events of individual detector may be affected by the randomness of non-quantum origin. And this non-quantum origin events are the uncorrelated events and they may get misidentified as coincidences. So we want to eliminate these uncorrelated events. We also call them accidentals. And for that, we need to narrow down the coincidence window. So if we can narrow down the coincidence window, we can eliminate the, the uncorrelated events. Why is that? Because coincidences scale linearly to the uh, coincidence window. So, if and uh, I, I can give you an example, I think that will be better to understand. Like the rate of 
accidental generation is S1, S2, uh, tau. That means this is the tau is the our coincidence window. If the value of tau is zero, then we can. It means that we have eliminated all the accidental events. So the value of tau get as lower. We it also increases our chance of eliminating more of these accidental or uncorrelated events. For our satellite, the value of tau is two nanoseconds. But principally, you can make it as small as you want. Now, there is one downside of using coincident event counts. Because the coincident event counts is uh, significantly lower than the individual detection events. So when we are using this coincident event counts, it also lowers the random bead generation rate. Randomness extraction. So now if X is a random variable that denotes the coincident event, we can write the probability of X equal to N with this Poisonian distribution. And lambda is the coincident rate, average of all the coincident counts. And we are taking a mean entropy of this distribution, which we can write like this. And the coincident events that we record in our counting circuit, we encode them in k-bit register. For us, this k-bit is a 16-bit register. And we are computing the age mean of this uh, distribution. And from this ratio, we can get the extraction ratio, which we denote by g. Usually we get the value of G from our experimental setup. And here G is less than one. There are many approaches to extract randomness from a system. We have used uh, L by M random Toplish matrix multiplication approach to extract L high entropy bits from M low entropy bits. And the ratio of L over M approaches this value G. This is a summary of our lab data, uh, which is around 35.6 kilobytes. And uh, here we can see the, the, the encoding register has the 16 bits. Our randomness extraction rate is 80 bits per minute. And the security parameter on this output random bits is two to the power minus 256. We can compute it from here. It means that if an adversary wants to predict the next bit in the sequence of random numbers, uh, he has to take two to the power 256 bits and uh, he has to process this, this amount of number, which is actually computationally infeasible. Uh, this is a randomness test that we have done on our data. So our quantum source that we have characterized in our lab and the replica of that quantum source we have on our satellite. And we have run, we have, we have done a Borel normality on both of these data sets. On the left hand side, this is from our lab. And from the Borel normality, we can see, uh, it means that, uh, first I should say what it actually means. It means that of a certain length of binary string should have a uniform uh, frequency of occurrence. So here, this single digit binary string has a, Frequency of occurrence around 50%. These two digits has a occur frequency of occurrence around 25%. These three digit binary strings have an occurrence around 12.5%. And if we look at the data from our satellite, it also follows a similar uniform distribution within the error curve because we are getting this data from our satellite and due to communication rounds, due to cycle, we, we couldn't get a lot of data. So from this uniform distribution, we can conclude that both of our data sets have passed the random nets criteria and they are random. Summary of our uh, test results on the data sets. Uh, so we have also run this ENT and die harder suit on our lab data. These two are standardized randomness tests. And from here, we can also see that uh, both of these tests uh, 
uh, has been passed by our data. Like uh, for the CNT test, our entropy is 7.99 per byte. That means out of eight bits, our entropy was uh, 7.99. And for die harder, it has also passed the test. So I have come to the concluding part of my presentation. Before I wrap up, let's go through the key points of our work. So we have implemented a QRNG on board a nano satellite, and we are still continuing to generate more random numbers on our QRNG because we want to increase our confidence in the performance of our QRNG. And uh, right now we are not publishing any uh, randomness beacon from our QRNG, but we are working on that. There are many randomness beacon available online. NIST has its own um, randomness beacon that it updates quite regularly. So yes, we, we intend to join this consortium uh, for a distributing public randomness beacon. Uh, and we are working on doing all the requirements that is needed for, for, for meeting this purpose, like doing the timestamping authentication. Um, yeah. So this is a part of our group of, from this uh, satellite mission. Thanks to all my teammates. Um, that's all for this presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you have any question, do let me know. You can also contact me at this email address. And if you're curious to know about our research, you can follow us here. Thank you once again.